So I tweeted before the start of the game about how it would be fun to see the Bulls win this game tonight against the best team in the Western Conference, the number one defensive team in the league, and how the front office will use this as a justification for doing nothing at the trade deadline. And of course, I kid one because I didn't actually think the Bulls would win this game, but two, there is no way that AK would use that as an excuse, citing this game specifically for why they didn't make any moves. But what may have been a joke now has me thinking I could very well see this being the case. Granted, I think most of us have been kind of embracing the fact that the front office isn't going to be making any moves at the deadline, and a win like this almost but confirms it. And in a weird, sick way, after this incredible comeback game of a win, I almost don't want to see them make any trades. Well, let me rephrase. If they're going to get good value in return for the trades, then great. But don't trade some of these guys just to make trades. I mean, I think that goes without saying, but you get what I mean. After seeing the way this team competed in the second half, and knowing that they have this in them, it somehow gives us this glimmer of hope like, man, they can do this. They can do this if they can just maintain this level of competitiveness and having that edge and tenacity in them. The problem though is we've been seeing this from the same core of guys for the better part of three years now. They give us these flashes of what they can do, turning things around and looking like one of the best teams in the NBA out there to then completely falling apart and regressing back to what we've been used to seeing. That's really the main thing that gives me pause with this group is their lack of consistency, their lack of effort and tough play for the whole 48 minutes that brings me back to reality and say, yeah, changes still need to be made. That said, though, we won't focus on the trade deadline for now and the Bulls and what they should or should not do at the trade deadline. Let's talk about this incredible game. Eerily similar to the game against the Sacramento Kings in which the Bulls found themselves down early, a lackluster first half filled with bad turnovers, poor shooting, poor defensive effort, and just like in the game against the Kings, that even trickled in a bit into the third quarter. But luckily for the Bulls, since they only dug themselves into a 23-point deficit instead of 30, they were able to successfully come back and win this game, and they did it on sound team basketball with some of the best defense we have seen. I know I said that about the game against the Kings, where the Bulls played some of the best defense we had seen from them all season. This second half was even better. I mean, you talk about being everywhere and every player giving maximum effort on the court on the defensive side. And not just effort, but playing smart defense, reading switches perfectly, getting through screens, playing great off ball defense. The Wolves still had incredible ball movement in the second half. They really made the Bulls work for it. But the Bulls never let up. Forced tough shots, turnovers, and that turning point in the third quarter where the Bulls outscored the Wolves 36-23, they weren't giving them anything. Anthony Edwards was torching the Bulls in the first half, and it looked like he was going to go off for a career high at the rate that he was going. Still finished the game with 38, but went cold and was shut down in the second half in large part thanks to AC. I mean, here's the thing that gets me. It wasn't just Alex Caruso. It really was a collective effort on the defensive end tonight in the second half. Hell, even Vucevic was playing solid D. Getting the start at power forward tonight, the Bulls had a season high 16 blocks in this one. 16 blocks, that was the highest number of blocks the Bulls had in a game in nine years, according to the broadcast crew tonight. Vooch and Drummond combined for eight blocks in total. Caruso had four blocks of his own as a guard. Like, listen, I have to give Billy Donovan some credit in this game. I know I've been critical here and there of Billy, and I know some fans have been even worse than I have when it comes to his coaching, but give him credit for this one. Trying out a new lineup knowing you're going up against the Twin Towers and Cat and Gobert. Trying out something new because clearly what the Bulls had been putting out there wasn't working with the small ball lineup that they have with no Patrick Williams. But second, also in taking a different approach with Kobe White on offense in the second half. Kobe was a non-factor in the first half. And that was mainly because the Wolves were hounding him and not giving him any space to get looks because the Bulls were mainly having Kobe play on the ball in the first half, which is usually the case and what he's most comfortable with. In the second half, the Bulls mainly had Kobe playing off the ball. Not all the time, but far more possessions than they did in the first half. And because they had him playing off the ball in a catch and shoot role or cutting the basket, they were able to get way more out of Kobe, getting better looks, and it paid massive dividends. That and also the fact that Kobe just played much, much better in the second half. He didn't look as engaged in the first for whatever reason. That might have partially been because he wasn't able to get to the basket and his shots weren't falling, so he might have been a bit frustrated. But for Kobe White, having three points at halftime, exploded for 30 points in the second half alone, hitting seven threes, going seven for 13 from deep. 11 for 21 overall, finishing at the basket despite being heavily contested and drawing contact, but also making the right plays inside using Vucevic and Drummond in the pick and roll. I mean, we've been talking about how we wanted Kobe to start taking over in the fourth quarter, having the ball go through him more, and you saw that tonight. Kobe is what helped the Bulls win this game. 
by changing things around in the fourth quarter and taking over the game. It wasn't as much the case in overtime as DeMar did the bulk of scoring and closing out the game in OT, but Kobe is showing yet again why he's the future for this team. 33 points, five rebounds, seven assists. Now back to the Vucevic Drummond pairing in the starting lineup. This is the first time we've seen both of them start. We've seen them each get a handful of minutes together more recently with guys being out, but this was the first extended period of time we've been able to see them play alongside together with Drummond playing the five and Vucevic at the four. And honestly, I actually loved it. Now, I don't know if it will work consistently over time and I need to see a larger sample size of them playing together, but it was great in their first start together because with Drummond as the primary rebounder, this enabled Vucevic to get out to defend the perimeter more. With both of them together, you saw better overall rim protection and box outs. You saw a situation where Vuce could take jumpers and there actually being someone down low who could grab the board for another opportunity. Also helped that Vucevic actually hit some of his threes tonight. But 24 points overall for Vooch, did a much better job finishing in the paint despite having one of the best rim protectors in the game on him for a lot of possessions, was 10 for 16 overall, 6 rebounds, and then for Drummond, I mean, we'll see if the Bulls end up moving him, his name has been coming out in trade rumors a lot more recently, but a game like this certainly helped his stock, his trade stock. I mean, he was putting in work on Rudy Gobert, even throwing it down on him a couple times for a dunk. 16 points, 16 rebounds, 4 blocks, 6 offensive boards alone, just a a solid stat line, a great game for Drummond, who brought some life and energy into this team. And then, of course, my guy Alex Caruso. I just love this dude. I really hope he's still with the team by Thursday's game because you look at his numbers and you say, well, three points, he shot one for five. What was so great about this game? But wouldn't you know it, he was a team high plus 19 in the game. Nine rebounds, six assists, two steals, and four blocks. Just always seems to make the right play, the right passes, the right reads on defense. His presence alone and the way he's been able to shoot threes this season helps spread the floor even when he's not knocking them down like we saw tonight. Just a great game from Caruso who sparked this comeback with his defensive effort and getting the crowd back into the game. And then of course, DeMar DeRozan. DeMar actually had four steals tonight, by the way. He's been getting steals like crazy this season. But DeMar, 33 points, doing most of his damage at the line, 17 for 18 from the free throw line. 33 points, five assists, and only one turnover. You know, there was one play, and I think it was an OT, where the Bulls got the ball off a turnover and DeMar was running with the ball in transition. The Bulls were up two, and you think, uh, DeMar is going to try to do some risky play where he takes it in himself with two guys on him, but he made the extra pass, drawing the defense away from Andre Drummond and found him down low on a cut to the basket for an easy two. Like, I know we give Debo a hard time in trying to do too much in the closing minutes, but we really do underestimate sometimes his IQ in those moments in making the right plays. And it's hard to see the Bulls actually finishing out this game in overtime without him. Anyway, last game for the Bulls before the deadline, last home game before the All-Star break. They move back to three games below 500 with the Grizzlies and the Magic up next. Two very winnable games. We'll see if the Bulls can continue to make strides in the right direction. And also, what changes, if any, we see between now and then to this roster. I'll obviously keep you guys posted should any trades happen here. You can also check out my second channel, the NBA channel, for any updates and trades league-wide. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.